Buongiorno, gang. Just got back from Italy after spending a week at Beretta HQ, and I'm pumped about all the content that we're going to be bringing you from Beretta, including some never-before-seen behind-the-scenes footage and a whole bunch of new guns, including the Beretta PMX that we announced a week or two ago on our sister channel, TFB TV Showtime. If you haven't seen that already, head over there, subscribe, but we're bringing you a full review of the PMX shortly. But today, the big announcement is the Beretta APX A1. I reviewed the Beretta APX, this exact one, a couple of years ago. I thought it was a perfectly fine pistol. The APX never really got that popular in the United States. I blame primarily what they call the Toblerone slide serrations here after the candy bar. Finger grooves, people really don't like that. I mean, I guess it's just not that attractive of a gun altogether, and that's actually really important in the American market, but it's a good pistol. So in a way, it's like the butter face of guns, the extra virgin olive oil face of guns. But those of us in the gun community who are familiar with the APX know that it's one of the most reliable striker-fired handguns out there, believe it or not. Our local range actually keeps records of all their rental guns, and the APX, at least a year or two ago, was their most reliable handgun that they had in the rental counter. Rather than shelving the APX, we're announcing today that Beretta is instead introducing the reborn Beretta APX A1, which is really what this APX always should have been. I got a behind the scenes look at the manufacturer of the APX A1, and I also got to shoot it with Beretta's pro shooting team at the range. I was lucky enough also to interview Beretta's COO, Mr. Carlo Ferlito, about this new pistol, but perhaps the most impressive part of this video is the conversation that I got to have in Beretta's R&D lab in Italy with the man who designed the APX A1 himself, Giovanni Prandini. He'll tell you not only about the new features, but more importantly about the grueling durability test that this pistol was subjected to, including a frankly unreasonable trial requested by the Brazilian government where the APX had to withstand 10,000 rounds of firing without cleaning, and that is such a Brazilian request. In other words, the APX A1 took the engine of one of the most reliable striker-fired polymer frame handguns on the market, but added features that we're all looking for like optic readiness. They also reworked the ergos and they relaunched a pistol that will likely be taken very seriously by both consumers and the military and law enforcement market. We're going to go ahead and kick this video off with my interview with Signore Ferlito, the COO of Beretta. Enjoy. Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV. It's my absolute honor to be with Mr. Carlo Ferlito, the CEO of Beretta, having an aperitivo. And this is what I'm calling apre shoot, the, ap the apre shoot. So we have no live ammunition. Uh, we're here at the, the restaurant at the, uh, the shooting range. So no ammunition present, yep. only one handsome and knowledgeable man to, to my right here. So Carlo, please tell us about the APX1. What is it? Mm, thank you, James. The, the, first of all, thank you for, for the introduction. It's always a pleasure. Um, yeah, the APX A1 is the, the newest uh, born in the striker fire pistol family of Beretta. Um, we have done a, a tremendous job, uh, my team did, uh, working on the uh, APX uh, platform and developing uh, all new kind of features in it that uh, takes it to the next level. Uh, we, we have been blessed with the great success of the of the APX platform, and this has been a great occasion to bring it to the next level. And when I mean uh, the next level is uh, 
the reliability and legendary reliability of our Beretta pistols. Uh, it's uh, a gun that will never let you down, um, no matter uh, how heavy and, uh, and uh, your shooting is and what the type of ammo you're going to use. And on top of that, we have done a really uh, uh, strict refinement of all the ergonomics, uh, from the serration of the slides uh, to the grip, uh, the frame, uh, uh, the way the, the, the trigger feeling, uh, uh, everything that we learned in these years uh, is now uh, condensed into this, uh, this gun that we are proud to launch. And we had the APX before. Everybody knows the APX, yeah. which was launched several years ago. It was already a reliable gun, striker fired, polymer framed, nine millimeter handgun. What's different? That's what everybody's wondering right now, because there are some things that I would hope you wouldn't change. It was a, a very reliable gun. I reviewed it. I threw it in the bayou behind my range, pulled it out. It, it fired. It ran. What's changed with this one? So <clears throat> the best way to do it is really to, to, to show. So where we uh, basically did was to work on the on the ergonomics, as I was saying, mentioning before. We changed, starting from the frame, uh, the finger grooves. Uh, we went to a straight uh, design. Uh, you know, the world is always uh, uh, divided between finger grooves, no finger grooves, etc. At the end of the day, we thought uh, after our focus group and our analysis, this is probably the best uh, way to do the uh, the, 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 the way the frame can hold better in your hands. The other thing is that seems uh, slight but is not uh, is this profile here. We went down a little bit with this and this gives you a better seating of the gun on your hand uh, which um, eliminates uh, what was uh, one of the um, comments that we had on the A0 that was the uh, top heavy type of feeling and basically was the, due to the fact that it wasn't really sitting well on your hand. So by doing this uh, modification and this improvement this gun gets uh, better there. Of course everybody can see that we went to a more traditional uh, serration type of system. Um, again uh, the, the, the older serrations uh, I personally love that. I understand that it's not for everybody's taste and of course uh, uh, it is important that we follow what um, the, the customer and, and our and our uh, people and uh, shooters prefer. It's extremely easy to operate. All the guns come with a, a red optic uh, ready. Optics ready, optics yeah. Ready. Um, it's a mandatory right now, so we have uh, uh, we followed this and we have done this uh, standard on all our guns. Uh, that is another important thing. Carlo, do you know yeah. if it's a? And I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have to ask while we're on the subject. Do you know if it's an RMR footprint or are you using plates? We are using plates. Uh, we are going to have uh, the plates uh, for the most uh, important uh, uh, optics. Uh, all the shooters that will uh, buy this uh, this uh, pistol will be able to use uh, an optic uh, straight away. Um, and the other thing we did on the gun, just to continue to finish, uh, is really to refine even more the trigger. That still remains a great reset and a very um, aggressive um, approach. And uh, a little bit of the surface treatment, the heat treatment inside, to make the gun even smoother than what it was before um, and improve even more uh, the reliability was already at an excellent level. So I think with this, uh, with this solution, we are at the top of a notch of a striker fire pistol. Is this a chassis-based system? Yes. Because it looks like I can see the window there. Absolutely, yeah. It's a chassis-based uh, pistol. Uh, so the modularity of the uh, of the grip is great. So you can change the grip with the shape, the color uh, that you that you like, um, and makes it more modular. The trigger is a modular system. So we saw in the factory that these are being made right alongside the Beretta 92 to the same standard even including cold hammer forged barrels it's uh, um it's made in, in um, highly automated lines uh, with extremely high accuracy um probably heard about the industry 4.0 that is this new trend of uh, putting a lot of sensors and uh, data into machines etc the machines that are where the slides the barrel uh, are made um, follow that philosophy and basically we measure every single step uh, of the of uh, the gun making uh, the vibration of the machine the temperature of the oil to the level that the, uh, the, the every every piece uh, is uh, identical to the other within the specs uh, and therefore there is no possibility to have uh, a fault uh, into the manufacturing. This is the, these, uh, these are all raw material. This is a raw material for uh, APX1. This is the raw material for uh, 92. So you see that they are completely different. 
here you have uh, obviously a locking system with uh, the block. Instead, here you have a typical Browning uh, locking, uh, locking system and that you are analyzed by, uh, by broaching. So they have a completely different uh, geometry. So for this reason, this, uh, this is a little bit easier compared to, to the 92. And a lot of quality control, if I remember correctly, yeah. I believe every single gun is fired Absolutely. before it leaves the factory. Yeah, it's fired by us. On top of that, it's fired also by the proof house, that is uh, the Italian proof house <coughs> with the high, uh, high energy round that tests and certify that. After that uh, heavy round, there is an x-ray inspection and another control, another cleaning. So it's a, it's a long, uh, long process, uh, but the guarantee of quality that is uh, for, you know, forever. So who buys a Beretta product? Doesn't matter if it's a piece or a he knows that he has a life value. And Carlo, if you could explain the proof house to the American shooter out there, because we, we're not very familiar. You know, you say it very matter of fact, you know, it goes to the proof house and yeah. we, we don't really have that in the United States, but it's very common in Europe. Yeah, the, there are two uh, standards in, uh, in gun making, uh, the SAMI and the CIP. CIP is the European, uh, uh, let's say, standard and SAMI is the, uh, the US. The SAMI is a recommended standard, the CIP is compulsory. In order to make it compulsory, there is somebody has to check that the gun correspond to the CIP standards. So it means uh, the dimension of the chamber uh, and the safety of the gun. And in order to do that, you need to have a proof house that, that proves that. So the proof house is uh, in Italy, in Belgium, in uh, Germany, in, uh, in, in Europe, and uh, all the guns are uh, goes through a, the, the shot of three rounds of high energy. And, uh, and after that, uh, there is a quality control to make sure that with high proof, uh, high pressure, Rounds, the gun is uh, is perfect and uh, there is no no issues. What is the game plan in terms of producing other slides, other frames? I have to ask. I know you probably don't want to talk about it because as we sit here today, this gun hasn't even been released yet. So yep. we're looking far ahead. Yep. But everyone's going to ask because when they see a chassis-based pistol, that's the next question. So I have to ask you. Yep. No, the sizing, uh, of course. So we are going to explore the possibilities of, uh, of the, all the sizes that this gun can, can offer from a Centurion to a Compact. Um, we'll uh, follow closely and monitor closely what the market will say and we'll uh, for sure follow uh, what our customers uh, would like to see. Calibers wise, we know the nine is still the king, uh, more than the king, I would say the emperor <laughs> of the market. Um, but of course, uh, this gun has been designed also to carry uh, uh, safely the, the, the 0.40 caliber. There is this 30 uh, caliber that came out that is also an interesting thing that we could look at. So let, let's uh, let's keep it at the beginning of a journey, as you know, when you introduce a new platform. And it will be a, an enjoyable journey to bring to the to the customer every year a new products and new variants, etc. So stay tuned. Still, the two most important questions. Mm -hmm. When, how much? <laughs> Okay, when uh, it's uh, it's now it's uh, mid-May. We this is the official launch. The gun is being delivered in these uh, hours to the best gun shops uh, in the in the United States. Uh, the objective here is to stay below the six hundred dollar mark. Uh, it's an aggressive mark, especially in this period with inflation and cost uh, raising. Uh, so uh, please go and check in the best uh, gun shops in uh, in US uh, for this great gun. Carlo, again, a privilege. Thank I have you. to say. Thank you for allowing us to interview you Cheers, on TFB TV. Thank Cheers. You. Thanks, Cheers, everyone, for watching. Take Thank care. You. So after my interview with Beretta COO, I got to tour Beretta's research and development lab and speak to Giovanni Prandini, the man who created the APX A1. He gave me details about this gun that you're not going to find anywhere else. Uh, the role of the, uh, my role for the APX and for the pistol in Beretta is uh, uh, that I'm the pistol design manager. Uh, so I manage all the design for all the pistols, APX, 92X performance and everything. Uh, with my chief, uh, Mr. Gentilini, and uh, we made all the development of the APX A0. And then I made by myself because my chief is retired and I made uh, the uh, design of the A1. Uh, it was something that starts from my chief. Uh, he has the idea to uh, make a full size pistols. We need also to participate to the MHS program. And uh, that problem uh, was uh, really, really um, uh, hard for us uh, because uh, it was exactly in the meantime that we, are, we were designing the APX. Uh, we made a lot of ex experience uh, due to the fact that we need to participate to the MHS. Uh, we are really in contact also with our uh, NATO uh, agencies 
that help us on the testing on the, of this pistol. We made all the testing, all the standard testing, so uh, the reliability and the durability of uh, at least uh, 30,000 rounds. We, we have a look at the mean round in stoppages, that is uh, our standard test, but uh, we also take a look uh, at what you said, so weighting of the parts, because uh, we can uh, anticipate some, sometimes some problem that we can have with, with one pieces. So we have a look at the reliability, but also the durability. So in 30,000 rounds, we don't want uh, that any pieces uh, could be break or could be too much wearing on that. Uh, also because after the 30,000 uh, rounds, we need to make uh, again uh, the safety tests in order to be sure that also the wearing didn't allow uh, the, the, the gun to be unsafe. Uh, but usually uh, we need to participate to a lot of tenders and uh, every tender has different way to measure the uh, mean round between uh, stoppages. Uh, this is due to the fact that uh, they want to test the pistol in different scenarios and uh, also uh, in different way. Uh, sometimes they uh, also the, uh, the way that you perform the 30,000 uh, fire test uh, it could be different for the pistol. For example, we participate, the tender that we won on the Brazil tender, uh, they ask us uh, to fire 10,000 rounds uh, with uh, no cleaning of the gun. Uh, you need the parts that must be as polished as, uh, as possible and the friction between the pieces must be as lower as possible. The recoil spring is a new recoil spring, uh, flat wire. Uh, we move now to the flat wire recoil spring because uh, we realize that uh, this type of spring uh, it's, uh, uh, have a higher um, durability during the testing. So uh, the, uh, the flat uh, wire spring uh, lose less uh, force during the firing compared to the standard round one, rounded one. That's why we made a fine tuning of the spring, not only the, uh, the recoil spring, but also the striker spring in order to, balance, to better balance the two springs and we have a, a little bit lighter uh, trigger pull on the, on the A1. Uh, so these two things uh, comes directly from the testing we made for the tenders. The other changes are uh, just ergonomical and aesthetical. Uh, for example, the new, the new serration, we, can, we move back to the standard serration uh, front and rear. Uh, we made some more checkering on the frame. Uh, we made some small changes also on the lower part of the magazine catch, so the trigger guard is a little bit different. Again, uh, for the ergonomy, uh, because uh, we also modify the web part, is a little bit lower uh, compared to the A0. Uh, again, because uh, uh, we know that the most important thing in order to uh, have a correct grip of the, of the handgun is how you have it with your, uh, with your hands. And uh, the two points that are the most important thing in order to manage the recoil is exactly the third finger and the web. So if these two parts are correctly uh, in, the, in the correct position, uh, you know, we notice that our shooter have a best results uh, manage the recoil uh, and, and firing. As I mentioned, I got to shoot the Beretta APX A1 with Beretta's pro shooting team, and I got some pointers from them. By the way, my shooting partner was none other than Danielle Valkyrie herself, a well-known female influencer and shooter, and I got to get her impressions about this new gun as well. Now I'm with Danielle Valkyrie, and we're at, Danielle, what's the name of the range? We just identified it. Tiro Avolo Sevio, I guess. We just got to shoot the APX A1 together. Yeah. Yes, it was great. We had a few runs. Sure. And unfortunately, guys, I have to confess, Danielle did outshoot me with the APX A1. She's a fantastic shooter. Thank you. But that's a lie. He was, <laughs> he was much quicker. <laughs> we'll fight about that later. Uh, and first of all, cheers, right? Cheers. So we just got to shoot the APX A1 together. What do you think about the gun? I love it, especially I love the grip. I mean, of course, you're you're smaller in stature, and that's a full-size pistol, but it, the ergonomics were good for you. Yes, they were. And I also like um, how the stippling is made because um, people who know me know I love gun tuning. So this gun is actually a little bit tu tuned already when you get it. So that's this is my favorite part, actually. Striker-fired handguns, is that something that you're used to? Or are you more hammer-fired? What do you uh, like to shoot? Uh, I like to shoot polymer guns. This is what I'm into. Currently, I'm looking for a new handgun so it was great to 
to shoot it and to try it. Right. And I would say that perhaps this is an improper comment, but people are used to me making improper comments on this channel, TFB TV, because usually, you know, you get a lot of pretty girls and they pose with the guns, but they don't shoot guns. You, on the other hand, are, are clearly a very good shooter. I, I imagine there's some viewers out there who would love to find your content online and see that you can actually shoot. So tell us what you like to do and how people can find your content. Yeah, first of all, thank you. Um, I know it's, it's rare, but I love shooting and uh, I think there should be more women who get into the sports. So if you want to see more, follow me on my social media, Danielle Valkyrie. Danielle, thank you again for offering your thank comments. You and again, good shooting. Thank Guys, you. cheers. cheers. Well, what about my opinion of this gun? First of all, I was absolutely blown away by the testing that this gun was subjected to. So I was impressed right out of the gate, but who cares how reliable or how durable it is if it can't shoot worth a shit? Well, I have good news for you. Now picture this, you are in Italy, you're already kind of starstruck being able to do something that you never dreamed you'd be able to do, that is Tour Beretta. And then you get invited to the range and it's like, okay, that's cool. You show up at the range and you've got the entire Beretta pro shooting team. You have the COO of Beretta and you've got Danielle Valkyrie all watching you shoot. And they say, oh, by the way, we made this course for you. You shoot it. Everybody's watching. And it's like, oh my God, you know, how intimidating is that? Oh yeah, and it was the first time that I was going to shoot the Beretta APX A1 and it was the first time I actually laid eyes on it. So that's about as intimidating as it gets, but I picked it up, I ran with it. Stand by. Yeah. Very nice. I even got a, uh, a round of applause from everybody watching in the crowd, even though I, I couldn't hear it with my plugs, but I thought that was incredible. So it was a great experience. Finally, on my last day at Beretta, they let me shoot just about any gun that I wanted to shoot from their armory at their T&E range, which is behind the factory, tucked beneath a mountain in Gardone, Valtrampia, Italy. Of course, I wanted to run the APX A1 with an optic. And as you might imagine, Ryan and I were both extremely impressed with the performance of the new A1. Not only the recoil mitigation of the trigger, but the accuracy. All right, so semi-rapid fire at seven yards. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I definitely threw the piss out of this one. It wouldn't be a TFB TV video if I didn't throw one, but that's two magazines in uh, just one hole with a couple out. So I would say that's acceptable accuracy from this gun. Check accuracy. Woo! I mean, guys, we're just burning it down in here, not even really trying. And you can see this is seven meters. I almost said seven yards, but you know, we're under an Italian mountain right now, seven meters. That's just rapid fire from me and Ryan, rapid fire into the head. Uh, this thing actually does shoot really well. In summary, there's very little to find wrong with the new APX A1. The original APX was already reliable, a good shooter and well-made, but it missed the mark with the ergonomics. Kudos to Beretta for not giving up on a promising design, but instead reworking it to add better ergos, optics readiness, better finish, enhanced stippling, increased reliability. Oh, not to mention this is a chassis-based system, which means that if you buy the full-size APX or any size APX, you can swap grips and slides without buying a new gun or completing another background check because the internal chassis in the gun is the serialized component. I guess at this point, the question really is whether or not the market will accept Beretta's second effort with this pistol. If the consumer and government market picks this thing up, then we can expect more slide and frame sizes, more holsters, more accessories. 
That's a pretty tall order in this incredibly crowded and competitive market dominated by excellent pistols such as the Glock 17 and 19, the Sig P320, and even outstanding guns from smaller market share manufacturers like the RX Delta. But if I were Beretta, I'd be playing the same chord over and over and over again. Reliability, reliability, reliability. Because of the unreasonable amount of testing that this gun endured, that's really what sets it apart from everything else on the market. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're going to invest in a new ecosystem of polymer frame striker fired handgun, you better choose wisely. I think that the Beretta APX A1 is a great choice. It's what the original APX should be. I hope people give it a chance because I would really like to see this gun become popular. And if the price is competitive with everything else out there, then I think it's going to do just fine. Well, buena sera, senorita, kiss me goodnight, because that's it for me in this video. But we've got plenty more coming from Beretta, and I'm talking about not only new gun releases like the PMX and the APX A1, there's more on the way, but we've also got behind the scenes videos of rare guns, rare Berettas from the Beretta Museum. We're going to be running that for the rest of the year until at least a big announcement in January, so stay tuned. Thanks a ton, guys. Take care. <laughs>